Here we are. John and I like old cemeteries. We're not morbid. Just the history. The history of old cemeteries. And Charleville have got a um, Charleville Cemetery Walk. And they give you a map and you go and look at the pioneers of Charleville. So here we are. It's what, what, what time was it? It is 5, five o'clock o'clock and it is 31 degrees. 31 degrees. But there's a bit of a cool breeze, so we're hoping it won't be too bad. But, so just be warned that this part of our video will have um, some interesting grave sites. Um, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's have a look. So here we have Mary Jane Collins, passed away 8th of January 1947. Mary Jane arrived in Charleville as Mary Jane Doolan and was the first child to arrive in Charleville by rail engine. Mary married Richard Collins in 1892 and raised 13 children. For many years in charge of the police in the Charleville district. Passed away in 1887. This is a really sad one. Em the memory of Emily Miller departed this life on January the 8th, 1893. She was 40 years old, but also her infant son Cecil, born January the 7th, 1893, and died January the 20th, 1893. So he was 13 days old. She died the day after giving birth. That's really sad. We're in this part of the cemetery. We're trying to find the oldest and the second oldest graves. And I think I am in the correct part. These graves, um, 1874, 1883. But yeah, I just can't find them. This one over here, full of weeds. Walter James, three years old. And that's so sad that there's all these weeds. So in 1990, Charleville um, went through some terrible floods and the cemetery was badly damaged. I'll just put the paper up so you can see the damage it's done. You see that? To me, that's heartbreaking. So a lot of these um, grave sites now are just bare and they're slowly trying to um, get the headstones in the correct places apparently. This poor little man, Robert Henry, was nine days old. This lovely bud, so young and fair, cut off by early doom, just came to show how sweet a flower in paradise could bloom. 1892. So back in the 1800s, Charleville Cemetery was divided into three sections. Um, the normal configuration of Christian cemeteries was east-west, headstones facing east for the rising sun, and waiting for the resurrection. Priests and nuns were faced to the west to watch over their flock. Only murderers and thieves were buried facing north or south and were often buried outside the headstone, uh, outside, sorry, the cemetery. So that's interesting. I've never really seen all the headstones facing the same way before, I don't think. So here is the oldest marked grave in Charleville Cemetery, Rosalie Caroline Parry Ogden, wife of David Parry Ogden of Moore Crishaw Dorset. Rosalie died of a snake bite while David was working as a sheep superintendent in Charleville. She died in 1874 at age 60 years old. I searched everywhere for Rosalie's uh, grave. Put it out to the universe asking for Rosalie to come to me and she did bless your heart Rosalie 
So just here is the second oldest grave um, marked at Charleville Century, and it's the Fraser family. Alexandra Jr. passed in 1883, Martha 1886, and also um, Alexandra Sr. in 1883. So they're all together, the family. I've lost John. I have no idea where he is. Oh, there he is all the way down there. I'm following the map that they give you to come and um, search for these grave sites. And I've just figured out, so if you come to do the cemetery tour, these green poles here actually give you the markers. So we're looking for number seven, George Herriman. George Herriman converted a 1912 model Dennis truck into Charleville's first fire engine. The Charleville Fire Brigade was formed in 1897 and commenced operations with only one fire hose. Mr Herriman's funeral was on the 15th of September 1964. So this is the resting place of Patrick John Clines. He died at 56 of years of age in 1878. Around 1832, Paddy Clines, a drover and cattle mover, put cattle on Towwood Station. He was reported to be an expert at moving cattle, working with horses and picking the right paddocks during flood or flood to locate livestock. He has the beautiful cross. This one breaks my heart. The Ward family, lost in this horrific accident, um, so it was in a in a car accident and the whole Ward family were travelling from Townsville to visit family in Charleville. Leanne was 15 months old, Donna 4 years old, Barry 6 years old, along with Mum Joyce at 24 years old and Father William at 26 old, years old. That is so sad. That is so sad. So this is Mary Furlong. She's called the Eve of Charleville. Mary was the first white woman to live and give birth in Charleville. On her arrival in Charleville, Mary didn't see another white woman for one year and ten months. She was born in Boris County, Carlow Island on the 14th of March, 1835. Mary's second child, Louisa, who was born on the 24th of September, uh, December, 1868, was the second white child born in Charleville and is buried in this cemetery as well. Mary passed away on the 5th of July 1912, aged 77. Bless you, Mary. This last one I'm going to show you is a Fitzwalter family. So George, born in Cootamundra, G.J. Fitzwalter, settled in Windora where he built a pice hut in 1872 and began a hotel and store using the Fitzwater pound note or shin plaster in 1878. In 1887, he bought the business of R&A Skinner in Charleville and opened the shop Fitzwater & Company. The hardware, drapery and produce store stood where the IGA is today in Alfred Street. He was deeply interested in local affairs and served time as the mayor and on numerous other boards and committees along starting Charleville's first brewery. Um, George passed away at 69 years old and 11 months in 1917. Next to him you've got Charles Thomas. He was nine, nine and a half, passed away in 1901. Thomas Charles passed away in 1922 at 73 years. And Mary Parkinson Fitzwalter died 1933, age 80. So, like I said, we're not morbid. Um, we just find there's so much history in uh, cemeteries, particularly cemeteries with um, people that are, are passed away and they're from years and years ago. And it makes you realise that back in those days, sorry, I'm a little bit lost, um, how many children, young children, didn't survive back in the very early 1900s? Um, so, 
we believe in, in coming and paying our respects to people. Often we'll bring some flowers out and place a little flower on graves that just really touch us. Um, but yeah, there's history in every cemetery and I don't believe it's anything but being respectful for the person. If you come out, just stand by their, their grave site and um, pay your respects to them. John's having a little sit down. This is quite a big cemetery and like I said at the moment I'm lost. I really refuse to walk anywhere that I think there's someone buried. I, I've walked the, quite the long way. I won't walk over any um, grave site. So it's a little bit of a tangled mess here and I'm having a bit of trouble. A bit like a Tetris I think. Having a bit of trouble weaving my way through.